Hello everybody! Welcome to my weekly guitar lesson. My name is Rob Reed. This is 20 Minute Guitar Player and we are here to teach you the guitar. And uh, before we start just make sure you subscribe and help me out I'm trying to get to a thousand trying to get to a thousand subscribers and but that's not important. What's important is I teach you more about the guitar so that you can play the songs you love. Alright so tonight we're talking all about this mysterious object. The clothespin. No, it's not a clothespin. It's a capo. And we're going to demystify it all, show you how it works. And I'm going to show you three ways to use a capo that'll improve your guitar playing and your musicality and your musicianship and all that. Okay? All right. So let's jump right into it. Let's see. First, we're going to look at different capos. So there's lots of different styles of capos, and here's some here. I'm not sure if you've seen these before, but they're around, and they're not clothespins, although they look like it. So I think I've used a bunch of these different ones, and you got different shapes, sizes, different ways to adjust them. Um, the one on the bottom there. That one tortured me for a long time. And some are really tight, some are easier to get tighter, and some are some work really nicely. Okay, so I just want to show you that. Lots of different ones there. And as I was saying, this one tortured me for a long time. Many, many years of my early days of playing guitar. <clears throat> that was my first capo. And I don't know, the thing about this is that it's either you get it's either you can't get it tight enough so it's too loose and it doesn't quite tighten on your guitar or you adjust it crank it up and it's way too tight and it near pinches the neck right off your instrument off your guitar there and it pulls the guitar right out of tune and oh it's a nightmare okay so that's the one that tortured me then I came across this one the shub capo it's called zoom in these are not these are not cheap pretty expensive pretty pretty expensive capos I actually got one as a gift from a wedding that I stood in years ago a friend from university gave one to the groomsman and he had it engraved inside the capo their date of their wedding and their names and the date it was really cool so this is the one I use all the time now because it's I just really like it because it's really easy to adjust and it's really small and slim so when you put it on the guitar it's like you can't even really see it it's so streamlined see you don't even really know it's there it kind of blends into the guitar so yeah I recommend these ones I did see them on sale a few months ago and I wanted to buy one just because it was so cheap good price on sale yeah but you might have to save up for them you'd be surprised Okay, and then I have this one here. This is the clothespin one. It's um, this one you can adjust. It's really easy to adjust, just with this little wheel here, knob you turn. But this one, you don't really adjust it. It's like one tension. And it's really, really tight, and it can kind of pull your guitar out of tune. One size fits all sort of thing. But it's a nice too, good one. But yeah, I recommend the Shub capo. Okay, so um, I just want to talk about like how it works, what it is, how it works, and then the three different uses that can improve your guitar playing with it. Okay, so basically, what a capo is is it replaces the nut on your guitar. So here's this is the nut. Well, the capo could sit there and be a nut. <laughs> okay, but the beauty of the capo is you can slide it up the guitar and put it on different frets. Okay, I can put it up here on the fourth fret. And you're like, oh, okay, now what though? Now what? What do we do? Okay, well, here's how it works. Your chords, your guitar chords are movable up the neck. Okay, and this is really important to know. So you can move, you can move your guitar, these chords up the neck. You can treat it like a note. Okay, so I can take my D chord and I can slide it up all these frets right up here to the way up 
way up high. But in order to move up the neck, you need to know how it works. So this could be a D, this could be a D chord. I can slide it up one fret like on the piano, see the D note there. If I slide that up one note, it's just easier to visualize the piano. If I slide that up one up to the black key, that would be D sharp. Okay, so I go D, D sharp, and then I can slide it up to an E, an F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. So if I just take that shape and slide it up, the chord becomes gets a different name. Okay, so if it's here, we know it as D. If I slide it up two frets, now it's E. Now, if I put the capo on my second, so I slid it up two frets, one, two. If I put the capo on the second fret, because I moved it up two frets, now I can play that D chord, but it actually becomes an E chord. And the nut is holding it all together and keeping it all in place, my capo. Okay? So now I can play, now my D shape becomes an E chord. And then if I play a G, with the help of the capo, I can play that G chord now, but it's actually an A chord, because I slid it up two frets, G, G sharp, A. And I can also play an A chord shape, but it's actually a, what do you think it is? It's actually a B chord. With the, and the capo allows me to play that with the open strings. So now I have a full B chord. No, now I have a full, well I have a full B chord, yeah. And then back to the E chord, okay? So, it enabled me to slide up the chords, play the same shapes, but be in a different key. Okay, now just think about that for a minute. That's kind of revolutionary. It's like a transpose button. It's, am it's actually pretty amazing when you think about it. Uh, hey Mark. Mark has a question. I'll take a pause here for a second. Should the capo go in the middle of the frets or closer to one fret than the other? Yeah, great question. Great question. So you want the strings want need to have tension and push against the fret that's that's in front of. So I would I would go close enough to the fret to get that tension happening. Good question, Mark. Thanks for that. Um, so that the strings aren't buzzing. On the, like an, give it enough tension so the strings aren't buzzing. You don't want to crank it on too hard because it'll pull the guitar out of tune. And you don't you want to be able to just get that capo on the fly there, and, like while you're playing on stage or something. Um, yeah, so I would push it, put it closer to the fret that it's just behind, but not too far up so that it doesn't block your hand. Okay, make sure your hand can get in there and play all the chords. So I'll just zoom in for you. Okay, so it's not obstructing my hand there. So yeah, just close to the front fret. I wouldn't go too far back because then you'll get buzzing and you'll have to tighten it even tighter and then that'll pull the guitar out of tune. Okay, thanks for the question, Mark. Okay, so, all right, where were we? Okay, so yeah, so it's revolutionary now because I can play the same chord shape that I know really well. But now it's in a different key. So instead of being instead of being down here D G A, now it's because I slid it up two frets. Now it's E A B. But I'm still playing the same shapes. If you don't like the B chord, put a capo on, play up here, and now you, the A shape is a B chord. Okay, is anyone confused yet? Let me know if you're confused. Okay, so let's take another example. Okay, we're gonna take this capo. We're going to slide it up. Okay, so I can, so let's take a different shape chord here. Okay, I can take C, my C chord. Now, C, C, D, or C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. Okay, let's, let's do it here. So we're going to put the capo on the fifth fret. Clamp it on. Sorry, guys. So F. 
The beauty of this is you can tighten it while it's on too. Okay, so now I have my F chord. I took C and slid it up to F. So C, D, E, F. E to F is a half step on the piano. Uh, there's no black key, so it's the next, next fret up. Sorry guys. Okay, so F, F. I can play the F, okay, I can play the C shape, but it's now F. I can play the G shape, and now it's C. I can play the F shape, it's B flat. So now I'm actually playing in the key of F using the using the chords the C the key of C chords. So C C G F becomes uh, F C B flat F. Okay, is anyone confused? Sorry, I lost everyone. I had four people on here. Now I lost everybody. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So it's basically you can take these shapes and slide them up and it becomes a different key. Okay, so now that's revolutionary because now I'm gonna tell you three different ways to utilize this, okay? So this makes playing the guitar, this makes playing difficult chords and difficult things on the guitar a lot easier, okay? Now that confused everyone, they all left. <laughs> okay, so for example, the C sharp chord it is down here, it looks like this, okay? Now, there's a, there's a C sharp chord. That's not something that I, is easy to get to. I don't want to play that, okay? Kind of difficult. And it doesn't even sound that good. Well, if I slap a capo on, I can play C sharp, take the C chord, slide up one fret, and here it is here. It's the same shape, C sharp. It's the same shape. It's just, it's just a C major chord. And I slide it up one fret, put a capo on, now it's a C sharp chord. So it makes the, playing things on the guitar a lot easier. For example, we have my band has a song and it has a riff like this. So okay, I can play it, but playing that through the whole song can really cramp up your hand and be really difficult. So if I put a capo on and play it like just with these two fingers. Makes it way easier and I'm only using two fingers. I don't have to bar anymore. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the banner up. It makes impossible chords possible. All right, so if you need to play a song, if you want to play a song in the right key and say there's a song written in the key of um, C sharp, okay, you can't, you can't be playing these C sharp chords down here and you might not want to play the bar chords. So put a capo on, take the C chord, slide it up one fret, now it's C sharp, okay, so C, C sharp, D, I can slide these chords up, put a capo on the first fret. Now you have the C-sharp chord. All the chords in the key of C-sharp, but I'm using simple shapes that I already know. So it's making impossible chords possible, basically. Okay? And if you like playing in a certain key, um, if you like playing in a certain key, like you can only play D, A, and G chords. Those are the only chords you know how to play. Well, you can take a capo and use those shapes and play in lots of different keys, okay? Just using those same shapes. So if I moved it up to the fifth fret, D, E, F, G, A. Now I'm playing in the key of A with the, sh with the D chord shapes. So A, no, I'm playing in the key of G, sorry. I'm playing in the key of G with the D chord shape. It's a little confusing. Okay? So yeah, it makes, it makes difficult um, chords and things on the guitar easy to play. Okay, so the second use of a capo tonight we're gonna talk about is for singing. It raises or lowers a key. 
Okay, for example, I'm a music teacher and I teach uh, young students, young kids had songs and stuff. We're always doing songs. But sometimes kids' voices are like higher and I might be playing a song down here. There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. Okay, that's kind of low for their little voices. So I want to raise up the key so that it, there's, I'm singing, I'm accompanying, accompanying them in a key that more suits their voices. Voices. So I'm going to just take that and I want to slide it up so it's higher. Okay. So I might put it up here on the fourth fret and do the same chords because I don't have time when I'm in class. I don't have time to tra cha like transpose and I'm on the fly. Okay. There's lots of pressure. So I just want to slide it up. So it suits their voices better, and they sing in a more comfortable key. So, same chords. There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. Okay, so it just suits their voice better, and you can raise the key that way. Yeah, so another great way for using cable is to raise or lower a key or a song to suit voices. All right, and... The third way, the final way that we can use a capo is to spice up our performance or a recording. Now this is, might be one of the most fun ways to do it because it makes, it makes um, the music more interesting. So if you're playing guitar with a friend and he is or she is playing down here, playing a song in the key of C. And it's kind of boring if you just join with them and play the same chords exactly. You know, it just has two guitars doing the same thing, which is, which is fine and cool. But if you want to make it more interesting and sound better, you might want to put a capo on and play chords that are higher up the neck so that it creates a more fuller sound. So I could play, um, I could play chords up here and I could, use, I could play the C up here, so G, A, B, C. I could slide my chords up to, to find a C chord. So she's down here, or he's down here playing C. I'm going to take a G, A, B, C. I found another C here. Put a capo on. This replaces the nut here. Now I can play the same thing they're playing, only using the G shapes. But now it's a C chord, and the capo allows me to get to that with the open strings. It's a C chord, listen, only it's a little higher sounding and it harmonizes differently and sounds better, more full, full sound. And then, and then if I go down to here, this becomes an F chord. Okay, so same chords, only different shapes up the neck higher and it gives it a more like you're adding a higher pitch to the to the song. So it sounds better, it sounds more interesting, fuller. You can go up really high. I've seen bands do really cool stuff. I could go way up here and play like, and it almost sounds like a mandolin. It's a little out of tune, but you can tune it up. Okay, so you have one guitar doing lower chords, another guitar doing high chords. Sounds really cool. And if you're recording, I love another tip, recording tip is, if you're doing a recording with at home or whatever, one guitar could be um, panned hard like left, playing low chords. Another guitar, you could double it, only put a capo on, play higher, and pan it hard right. So you have this really cool stereo sound of like two guitars playing and it makes it sound a lot bigger and more interesting. Um, I had another tip there, but I forget. <laughs> Any questions, guys? Uh, so that's how you can use a, a capo three different ways to spice up your playing. Um, first way just makes impossible chords and difficult things in the guitar more easy to play that we looked at. Um, for singing, it raises the key so that you can match people's voices better, people that you're accompanying. And the third way, it spices up your playing. If you're playing live with somebody, 
just one per guitar can play the same chords only higher using a capo other person's low get a more full sound and it's kind of boring if you're just playing the same thing that's what I would recommend if you guys have any other recommendations for capos and how to use them let me know in the chats we can talk about it um, yeah thanks for joining guys that's it for this lesson so take what I showed you and run with it have some fun try it out yourself and let me know how you get along we'll see you in the next video if anyone else has any comments thanks guys